What's going on YouTube? It's James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. And I just want to acknowledge that writing well formatted and thought out code can be tough. So I want to show you some tools that can help automate that process for you. So in this video, we're going to look at ESLint and VS Code. All right, so I've got uh, basically just uh, just kind of a dummy file open here in app.js and it's got a few uh, a few different lines of code. These aren't significantly meaningful by themselves. Uh, but what I want to show you is one, there's, uh, there's some formatting issues, probably want some spaces in here, probably want this thing to be tabbed over. This has too many tabs. Uh, and then there's some other things about the code in terms of just like structuring code that we might want to improve and we'll talk about that in a second. So what we're going to talk about is ESLint. Let me pull up the um, ESLint page here. You can go to ESLint to find out more. This is a pluggable linting utility for JavaScript and JSX. Basically what this thing does is it looks at your code statically and tries to find potential errors or malformatted code uh, and then kind of take care of giving you some hints about it as well as being able to automatically format it as well. So that's what this stuff can do. And that's what we want to look at here. So to get started here, the first thing we need to do is initialize um, this project as a JavaScript project as uh, by running npm init. So by running npm init, I'm just going to enter through these default values. What this is going to do is create a uh, package.json file, which basically has metadata and package dependencies for this project. Now, with this being a JavaScript project, we can then go and run npm install dash g eslint so we want to install the eslint package globally on our machine go ahead and install that and that dash g flag is how you do global uh, keep in mind you're going to need to have node installed on your machine to do this so if you don't go ahead and get that all right so we've got eslint installed globally now we can run eslint dash dash init what this is going to do is prompt us for some questions on how we want to use this and then basically create a configuration file for eslint for us automatically which is pretty sweet so when I do this, it's gonna ask some questions. Uh, what do you want this thing to do? I'm gonna ask it to do the most. Check syntax, find problems, and in, enforce code style. All right, then uh, what type of modules do you do you wanna use? JavaScript modules or imports that you'll see in React and Angular and thing like, things like that. Common JS is require statements that you see in Node. Let's just pretend this is a backend application, so let's do common JS. Uh, what type of framework? No framework just yet. Uh, browser or node, we talked about this being a node project, so we'll run it in node. And then uh, how do you want to define a style for your project? Let's start with a popular style guide. Uh, they've got lots of different ones out there. One of the biggest ones you'll see is Airbnb. I'm just gonna choose that one. And then I want it to be in JSON format. And then what this is gonna do, it's asking me here if I agree with it, it's gonna go ahead and install some packages, some dependencies for me to be able to do all of the things that it needs to do. So this is gonna run for a second. We should see a node modules folder. This is where all those packages were installed. And then you see a package.json uh, that has added a few extra dependencies in here. So with this install, notice I have a bunch of, uh, bunch of stuff popping up here, highlighting, probably yelling at me to say I'm wrong. One thing I wanna do, before after you've seen that is come into my extensions and I want to get the ESLint extension and disable that and reload just to show you where you are right now in this process you probably won't see anything to be able to see stuff pop up you'll need to install the ESLint extension and that's what I had that I disabled now I'm going to enable it and I may not need to restart my workspace now it'll prompt you if you do okay so now that I've got um, ESLint enabled, you can see I've got all these different um, errors in here. And also I've got an ESLint rc.json file. And this is the configuration file for ESLint. This is how it knows what recommendations to do. And uh, notice, remember those settings that we chose, browser, or actually I think we, maybe I accidentally chose browser instead of node. Uh, but CommonJS are the require statements extends Airbnb base. This is going to take all the rules from Airbnb and use them. And then we can define some custom rules in here as well. Let me grab. All right. So now we've just got default rules. So let's come over to app.js. One last thing I want to do. Well, let's see. Let's hover over here. Uh, read only global name should not be modified. This is because since I didn't define this as a const or let, 
uh, it's basically putting it as a global variable on the global um, on the global object, which is not good. So it gave us a warning about that. Then we come in and hover on James. Must use single quotes. Okay, I could fix that myself. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, let's see. Expected indentation of two spaces. Uh, obviously, this thing needs to be indented. All right. Console log. This is a warning. Uh, this is saying we don't want to leave any console log statements in our code. Get the same thing down here. And then also a spacing issue. And then uh, name is already declared. Looks like we've already declared a variable name here. So we probably don't want to use that same thing because it leads to confusion in terms of our code. So we could call this F name for first name and update that. All right, so that error goes away, um, is assigned. Okay, so it's telling us that we've got a function that we've assigned but never used. Okay, great, that's super helpful. Uh, one of the things that we can do is come into settings and you can get to it from the gear and settings and search for ESLint. And you can make sure that auto fix on save is checked. This way, notice the quotes up here. When I save this file, it added the single quotes. It added my spacing here, added spacing here. I actually did something a little weird with the semicolon. I think that should go there. All right, so most of my errors are gone. Now it's saying I've got a function that I defined but never used, so I could call, say, hello, linting, and pass in James. All right, so I've at least called that thing. Uh, then single quotes, I can save, it'll go away again. And then console logs, this is telling me that uh, I'm not supposed to leave console log statements in here. Um, and you can actually go in and configure how these things work. And in VS Code, if you type quotes and then start typing, it'll give you some IntelliSense on what you're working with here. So if I did no, no console here, I could choose whether or not to turn it off. If I turn it off and come back, then notice those, um, those highlights, those uh, yellow warnings are gone. If I put it to error, then it's gonna be red, it's gonna show me this as an error. And then I could, I think you can also use numbers in here too. So zero is gonna be off, and then one is gonna be warning, see that turn yellow. And the last one is error, sorry about all those dings. Uh, now it shows error. So you can go in and customize all of these rules, and if you look inside of, where are they? The rules, you can see all the rules that you can define. And this is just a great way to standardize the way that you write code to automatically take care of the formatting for you if you change that setting in VS Code with that ESLint extension installed. You don't have to worry about semicolons, you don't have to worry about spacing, you don't have to worry about quotes. It can auto format all that stuff for you and it can also uh, lay down some really strict rules on, on formatting and structuring of your code of how you write code and help you catch errors before they actually get to production, which is pretty great. So this is something you definitely want to add to your VS Code and development experience. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you are able to write better code faster using this video. I wanna thank you guys for checking it out and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.